All right, so we are going to get started on the five supergroups of protist. This is a pretty lengthy PowerPoint, so I'm going to break it down um, day by day for the supergroups. So basically what's going to happen is I'll lecture on one supergroup, you'll be finished with those notes, and then I'm, you'll go do part of the big lab that's a part of this chapter. And then when you're finished with that, then you'll move on to the next supergroup. It's just a good way to break up the monotony of notes and to keep things straight in your brain because there's going to be a lot of information thrown at you about each um, supergroup and you're going to have to be familiar with each of the characteristics that are present in all the supergroups. So let's get started and then I'll explain roughly what you'll be doing also with the lab. So here we go. So the current hypothesis about protist groups should be classified. Some of these groups that we have um, classified are well supported with morphological and DNA data. So such as their cellular walls, if they have ribosomes, what type of DNA molecule. Now, because protista was made into its own um, group because it's very unique uh, with nutritional styles, with how it replicates, is between, you know, you have um, organisms that act more like bacteria and organisms that act more like eukaryotes. So as this information has is being um, developed and studied, uh, more groups will probably be made or they will be modified later on. But right now, these are the current thinkings, and these are the major groups that we will be studying in this class. So the first group um, is excavates. You can see here, this is a chart um, that um, is very helpful, I think, to understand breaking it down. I would recommend coming back to this um, throughout the lab to keep things straight in your brain. So the first group we're going to be looking at is excavates or excavata, and then we'll go to chromoaviolates, rhizarians, and then unicons. And then we have archaeoplastida, um, which I'll talk more about briefly, you know, later on in the, um, in the notes. And then they're um, into subgroups or clades, and then they're broken down into specific examples. So let's get started with excavata. Escavata, these organisms are grouped based on the properties of their cytoskeletons. So cytoskeletons are a group of networked proteins um, that compose um, basically the cell um, wall and membrane. So the cytoskeleton um, is unique in excavates because on the one side of their skeleton or cytoskeleton there is a groove and it looks like it's been excavated. So they excavate um, land, driveways, right? They they dig. So there honestly looks like there is a spot in the cytoskeleton of excavata that has been dug away. Excavates also have modified mitochondria and I'll come back to that here momentarily. And two major groups have flagella that are different from other organisms. Again, this group is relatively tentative and may be eventually modified. So let's get into specific examples. So the first subgroup are called diplomonads. Diplomonads, so you have your supergroup, excavata, and then you have your subgroup diplomonads. So in diplomonads, they have mito modified mitochondria called microsomes. In the microscomes, they have no electron transport chain, which is pretty interesting because the electron transport chain fuels energy in um, plants and animals, either in the um, Krebs cycle or cellular respiration. So they use um, other anaerobic pathways to receive their energy. They also have two nuclei and they have multiple flagella on their cellular structure. Many diplomonads are parasites. An example of a diplomonad is Giardia lambia. Giardia lambia is a hiker sickness. A lot of hikers get it when they're out drinking water. 
Um, you know, mainly you'll find it in stagnant water, but it can be present in running water if it's not treated correctly. Um, a lot of animals, such as your pets, will, especially dogs, will contract Giardia um, drinking water, um, contaminated water. It just causes severe diarrhea and um, not and throwing up. So that is Giardia. Again, I, I'm going to reiterate. You have the supergroup Escavates. It's a subgroup Diplomonad, and a dip, an example of a Diplomonad is Giardia lambia. Here is a photo of the cute little critter. Um, in the lab, uh, many of the times you're going to be looking at slides. Unfortunately, there's no prepared slides of Giardia lambia, so you will be actually doing this drawing out of your Campbell biology book. So you can see here that it has the excavated side in the groove of its cytoskeleton, and it has um, modified mitochondria, or, um, modified, modified mitochondria, and it has multiple flagella. So those are the key characteristics that you will find in diplomonads. Next, the next subgroup of excavates that we're going to talk about are called parabasalids. Parabasalids have a reduced number of mitochondria and they are called hydrogenosomes. Hydrogenosomes are also anaerobic so they require no oxygen to go un undergo metabolic pathways and they produce a hydrogen gas as a byproduct. Most organisms as we've been studying produce carbon dioxide or oxygen as a byproduct. These critters produce hydrogen gas. An example of a parabasalid is a sexually transmitted um, disease called trichinomus vaginalis. Um, males can also be infected, but they usually have no symptoms. What are the symptoms in women? Well, they're not very pleasant because of, it causes a burning, itching sensation from the release of the hydrogen gas. Basically, these little critters eat the... Um, wall of the vaginal lining. Kind of gross, right? But that is Trichinomus vaginalis. On the next slide you will see a microscope image. So again, here you have the excavated side, you have the multiple flagella, all the key characteristics that we need for excavates. So you have your supergroup excavates, your subgroup parabasalids, and then the example for your parabasalid is Trichinoma vaginalis. Next subgroup we have in excavates is called Euglenozoans. Their main morphological feature or unique characteristic is a rod that's located inside the flagella. Within Euglenozoans we have a kinetoplastid. These are single large mitochondrion with a large mass of DNA called a kinoclast. So within euglenozoans, you will see actually really large mitochondria with DNA snarled in the mitochondria, and that technical term is a kinetoplast. They are a free living parasite. Um, an example of um, a kinetoplast is trypansinoma. Uh, Trypansinoma causes African sleeping sickness and Chagas disease. It actually affects the red blood cells. It makes you tired, it makes you lethargic, causes fever. Um, you get them surprise, surprise by mosquitoes, um, like all good diseases where they come from. So here is an example of um, trypansinoma. Um, trypansinoma is the purple image that you see. These donut looking things are your red blood cells. Again, you have the undulated membrane, the flagella, you have the excavated side. This is trypansinoma. Then the next one is euglenoids. Euglenoids have a pocket at one end which one or two flagella will emerge. They're really simple to distinguish. I think you'll have no problem telling what a euglena is um, or an euglenoid. They are um, pretty unique that they are mixotrophic, meaning they can undergo photosynthesis or they're chemoheterotrophs, meaning they can ingest other um, creatures to gain organic molecules and they can also um, synthesize their own energy. So an example is euglena and it's you've seen euglena hopefully maybe in pond water. 
um, they're, they are your, you know, typical um, microscopic organism. Again, you'll see um, the long flagellum is really the dead giveaway, and they really are this oval in shape with this curved excavated side. So that is the end of um, Escavata. Kind of went through it fast, but a lot of the information that you're going to be finding is in your lab. So you will be receiving a handout, um, much like this, actually, this handout. And I have it broken down into the um, supergroups. So here we have excavates. We have your diplomonad, and your example is your Giardia lambia. We have your parabasalid, uh, which is your uh, trichinomus vaginalis. We have your kinetoplastid, which is tripansinoma, and you have your um, euglenoid, or your, it, which is your euglena. So you'll be drawing each of these from your book. These two are slides, and then you'll have to answer um, these said questions. Uh, I'm going to go over this in another video um, because I want to make sure that you thoroughly understand what's going on in the lab, and I'm running out of time. But that is your first mini lecture on excavates, and stay tuned because next we'll be talking about chromo alveolta, which has a little bit more critters in that supergroup.